This is the Sony Venice, and it has been used by a massive range of productions over the past few years, with some of the standouts from 2022 for me being Top Gun Maverick, Dharma, The Whale, Andor, Russian Doll, and Severance, all of which look fantastic in their own way. However, there is actually one little trick that is possible with the Venice system that you might not know about, and this is the Rialto extension system. This system allows you to essentially separate the sensor block from the camera body and processing for remote operation using a durable cable while still harnessing the full capabilities and image quality of the Venice system. Creatively, this opens up ways of capturing top tier image quality in new and unique ways that aren't possible with traditionally sized cinema cameras. Looking across the different productions that have used the Venice Rialto system, you can see three clear use cases or configurations. First is backpack rigs, where the Rialto is used handheld or with some kind of support system like an easy rig. This not only changes the potential perspective possible when running handheld, but also allows for easier operation in tighter environments. A great example of this was its use in Netflix's documentary series, Last Chance U. Next is tight or unique setups, such as this great example from Top Gun Maverick, where it may look a bit weird, but in tight locations, that extra few inches of depth can make a big difference. And lastly, fully remote setups, such as on a jib or crane, or even set up in more dangerous scenarios where you can't have an operator. This allows the camera to still be fully controlled away from it using the rest of the body and any other control equipment you may need for focusing or movement. Let's take a look at some of the awesome productions that have used the Rialto system, starting with probably the biggest and craziest example, Top Gun Maverick, which flew onto cinema screens all over the world last year and blew people away with its incredible imagery and production. Venice was used across the production and Rialto looks to have been used a bunch. Take this configuration in the cockpit for example, we can see some full Venice One bodies alongside Rialto systems too. They also look to have removed the PL mounts and are using E-mount lenses, which is possible thanks to the removable PL mount on the Venice. It looks like the lenses were stripped down as well, which is most likely to reduce weight as much as possible. Wanting to cram four cinema cameras into such a small cockpit while still capturing great imagery made the Venice a pretty obvious choice for their setup, and the imagery from the cockpits looks absolutely amazing. The sensor block includes the built-in high-quality ND system in the Venice, which allows for configurations to be even smaller while still being able to get correct exposure. This can easily be controlled on the Rialto unit itself or remotely. The cinematography in this film is stunning, and I'm sure it wouldn't have been possible without the use of the Rialto system. Another production that utilised Rialto was the fantastic Boiling Point, this film is a 90 minute runtime one shot with no cuts or obvious stitches, which is pretty crazy. DP Matthew Lewis used Venice and Rialto in an easy rig backpack configuration to allow him to navigate around the tight restaurant locations far easier than the normally configured Venice would allow. The result is a film that feels incredibly tense and immersive. If you haven't seen the film, check it out. Blonde also used Venice as its primary system, and interestingly, the entire film was shot at the camera's second base of 2500 ISO. They used Rialto in lightweight body mount configurations without having to compromise on image quality, and it was also used for intricate handheld segments which would not have been possible with a fully rigged Venice. It's great to see more and more films using Venice and really pushing the limits of the image this camera can produce, and the results here are fantastic. The idea of removing the sensor away from the processing portion of the camera isn't actually a new concept. The first camera to do this was the SI2K Mini, which was released way back in the mid-2000s. This was used on features such as Slumdog Millionaire and 127 Hours, and was a bit ahead of its time. Ari also released a pretty similar system back in 2012 for its Alexa series called the M. It was initially developed for use with 3D rigs, but ended up being used more creatively as you would have expected, just like the Rialto. The one big downside of the M is that you can't reattach the block to the Alexa body, which does limit it. I do think that the system that Sony has developed is more versatile than the ones that have come before it, as you can easily go from using Rialto to a regular Venice rig pretty quickly. It also means that rental houses don't have to carry an entirely different camera system. They can just simply rent a Venice out with or without the Rialto system when needed. The Venice 2 has two different sensor blocks available currently. The existing 24.8 megapixel 6K full frame sensor used in the original Venice, or a new 50 megapixel 8.6K full frame sensor, which unfortunately cannot be used with the original Venice body. However, both sensors do work with the Venice 2 body. The sensor block is an easy five minute swap out, held in by just six screws. If you ever do this, it's worth knowing the correct way to do it. So here's a quick rundown of the best methodology. There are actually two different Rialto systems, so it can get a bit confusing as to which one goes with what. Rialto 1 can be used with Venice 1 and Venice 2 bodies with the 6K sensor. 
Rialto 2 can be used with the Venice 1 and Venice 2, with the 6K sensor, and with the Venice 2 and the 8.6K sensor. The Rialto 2 is very similar in design to the first one, but has been designed with the increased horsepower needed for the increased data the Venice 2 8K sensor captures. It is now available with two cable lengths, 3 or 12 meters, and has four configurable buttons on the body, whereas the original Rialto only had two. And this is a big improvement. These buttons are crucial for controlling the camera, and having four now means you can bind pretty much everything you need as an operator to the extension unit. We've been lucky enough to shoot a little short creative piece using the Atlas Mercury's, Sony Venice 2, and Rialto 2 system, and we managed to get the Rialto 2 into a few different unique scenarios. We are currently rotating our showroom stock, so this was a bit pieced together kit-wise, and this meant that we had no backpack for the Venice, which we would have loved to have had. The Rialto 2 was borrowed from Sony, and it unfortunately had been damaged on a previous shoot, which meant the 3-pin RS port was dead. However, even with all these compromises, using the Rialto was great. I just wish we had some more time to put it into a few other creative and challenging scenarios and had all the kit we needed to properly surround it. But it was great getting to use it as we did. There's a bunch of rigging out there now for Rialto, which will allow you to configure it into a range of different scenarios. We had the Arri Pro set on ours during the shoot. Sony has a great webpage which breaks down a few different rigs and configurations if you need some inspiration. Let us know what you think of the Rialto system or if you have any further questions down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.